<sighs> oh, what's wrong, Logic? Oh, uh, nothing. It doesn't sound like nothing. Well, it's it's just... I started this whole plot line, like, ages ago about how I wanted to escape hell, and I never really did anything with it. That's alright. Nobody cares about your dumb storylines anyway. I know. I, I don't even care about those. But the thing is, I kind of meant it. This place sucks. Is it the tentacle monsters? No, they're good company. Is it the heat? No, that's actually useful. It helps to maintain my body temperature. Is it the millipede infestation? No, they help me save a lot of money on snacks. Then what is it? Well, I don't want to sound like a whiner, but it's kind of lonely. Yahweh was a good buddy, and it feels like I've been separated from him forever. And Lucifer's here, but he's busy all the time. Izet's here, but she stays at that villa, and that's way on the other side of that weird vortex. There's baby Elzebub, but she's dangerously carnivorous. And who else is there? That's it, right? Besides, this house makes me dizzy. So what are you gonna do? Exactly what I said. I'm gonna get out of here, obviously. But Logic, they say hell is inescapable. It sure is, for people who don't have a top hat full of brain. I've seen under your top hat, you have a normal-sized brain. I don't keep it in my head, stupid. I keep it in my hat. It's modular. That doesn't seem physically possible. Yeah, maybe to small brains like you. Now shut up and let me think. Was that door always there? I think so. What's inside it? I don't know. A closet? Then why does it have a welcome mat? I guess so people feel welcome when they come out of the closet. But then it's turned the wrong way. It's welcoming people going into the closet. Well, don't you like to feel welcome in your own closet? I guess, but I'm going to check it out. What the hell? What? This is... It's what? This is my house. You're surprised your closet is in your house? No, I mean it's my old house from before I died. My earthly house. This makes no sense. Oh, there you are, Lodgy. I wondered where you'd run off to. Welcome home, dearie. Grandma? Yes, it's me, your dear old Grammy. You're just in time. I've got an apple pie cooling on the windowsill, and- I am very confused. Oh, never mind. The homo agenda's done a real number on all the boys these days. No, not like that. What's going on here? Why is my house in my closet? I don't understand. You just walked out of the closet. Are you feeling all right, grandson? I am not- Sure. You're probably just hungry. How about we call your little friend back inside and old granny will make you two a nice bowl of Campbell's soup. I'm sure that'll make you feel right as rain. You're right. That sounds real nice. Can I put crackers in it too? Oh, you can have as many crackers as you like, dear. That sounds so great, Grandma. Thank you. Wait, what friend? They tell the kids, we've got vestigial structures. <gasps> Now, a vestigial structure is something you don't need anymore. Grandma, what the hell? Kent Hovind is not my friend. Now, Lodgy, don't be rude. I'll be whatever I want to be. You apologize to little Kenty, or there will be no crackers. Sorry, Kent. There, doesn't it feel better to be nice? Yes, Grandma. Now you two play nicely while I'm in the kitchen preparing your soup. Okay. Kent, with all due respect... You do realize that's not what a vestigial structure is, right? Whether it has any function at all is irrelevant. Vestigiality refers to the loss of ancestral function, which could mean that the structure has no function at all in the given species, yes. Or it could just mean that its function has changed. So if this conversation is going to be all about how this or that vestigial organ actually does have some function, you've already missed the point and it's going to be a big ol' waste of time. But talking to you already is a waste of time, so go on, I guess. They'll say, boys and girls, you have an appendix that you don't need anymore. That's a vestigial structure, that's proof of evolution. I feel like whether the appendix is useful or not, or even whether it's vestigial or not, is going to be fairly irrelevant to this conversation because there's no way this is actually intended as a debate about the function of one specific organ. No, I think it's really going to be about what vestigiality is, how it's established that something is actually vestigial, what that implies, and whether or not one vestigial structure or any number of them is proof of evolution. So how about we cut the shit? I heard that. Don't make old granny soap your mouth, young man. Ugh, fine. How about let's cut the dookie and talk about what you really mean. <laughs>
Well, excuse me, you do need your appendix, okay? Okay, great, whatever. If you like, for the purposes of this conversation, we can say it's the most important organ in the entire human body. It's the Swiss Army knife for your gut bits. Not only is it in charge of every single one of your bodily functions, but in a pinch, it can crawl out your belly button and open up a tin can. What the appendix does or doesn't do means less than nothing to me right now. That is stupid. You're stupid. Be nice, logic. Sorry. But you are. The appendix is part of your immune system. If your appendix is taken out, you can still live, okay? But it increases your susceptibility to quite a few diseases. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes also. That doesn't prove you don't need them. Yeah, well, I guess that'd be relevant if vestigiality meant a body part that does nothing at all. But it's not, and yet, for some reason, you're basing your entire argument against vestigiality on your belief that that is what it means. Because you're stupid. There are no vestigial organs. And even if there were, that would be the opposite of evolution. That's losing, not gaining. So, are you planning to get any of your definitions right here, or should we just stop right now? Because I rarely see the point in arguing with someone who insists on misrepresenting their opponent's position after it's been explained very clearly to them hundreds of times. Kent, since when was evolution defined as gaining something? I mean, we've been over this, right? Over and over it. We're on our 12th video together right now, and I certainly don't have all of them memorized, but there's no way that by now I have not provided you with a reasonably solid explanation of what the basic concept of biological evolution is. And I know for a fact that it had been explained to you many more times than that before you gave this speech, so you have absolutely no excuse for continuing to get it wrong. Whether you believe it or not really is not the issue here. I mean, disagreement is not inherently dishonest. But if after all the times you've had it explained to you exactly how you're misrepresenting your opponent's position and you're still arguing about something completely different from what you claim to be arguing about, then you're either incredibly stupid or incredibly dishonest. Now, I think my opinion's fairly clear by this point. I think you're both. Either way, at this point, I'm just not that inclined to try to help you join the actual discussion anymore since you're either too busy drooling down your own chin to understand what that discussion is even about, or you're just unwilling. This textbook says, boys and girls, whales, and many organisms here, like a whale, retain traces of their evolutionary history. True. For example, the whale retains pelvic and leg bones as useless vestiges. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not true. I agree. Useless vestiges is inaccurate, but vestiges is accurate. Those bones may not be useless for anything at all, but plop that whale down on land and tell me how well they work as legs. You know, Kent, personally, I wouldn't be too worried about the wording in a science textbook from 1989. That book was already long out of date by the time you gave this speech. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the function of that part of whale anatomy was even known back in 89. If you have a problem with the phrasing, I'd suggest you head back in time a few decades and complain, because complaining in 2018 or even 2001 is a total waste of breath says the guy debunking the speech 17 years later, I know. This one says, just imagine whales walking around. It's true. These little bones right there is what they're talking about. <laughs> just imagine him walking around. <laughs> yes, Kent, thank you for reiterating my point. The pelvic and leg bones of whales are absolutely useless for their ancestral purpose of walking around on land, which of course was what that one textbook, sorry, a uh, children's picture book, good to see you're keeping up with your reading there, little Kenty, but that's what that quote was about. The ancestors of modern whales and dolphins, not modern whales and dolphins, something like Dorudon. Oops, wrong fossil. Those little legs there sure don't look much good for land walking, although they do look a lot better than the ones on the modern whale you showed. How about Ambulocetus? Yeah, that'll about do it. Those are some fully-fledged legs. An examination of every anatomical feature, not just the legs, of these fossils and a few other transitional fossil species, draws a direct path of development from whale-like animals with full-fledged hind legs to, well, whales. And that's the real point here, Kent. The pelvic and leg bones in modern whales do not exist in a vacuum. They exist within a much broader context of fossil finds that become increasingly whale-like over time, and not just in the legs. Whether these bones do or don't have any function or not in modern whales is less than meaningless. They're not functioning as legs, and yet they're in the same place, and they have the same structure, and they show the continuation of the pattern of hind leg degradation that's seen in those earlier fossils. And so they provide further evidence 
evidence of the link between modern whales and those fossils. Even though these whales don't have external useful legs, they still kinda do have legs in a way. And if evolution is indeed how species originate, then because change happens gradually over many generations, we would expect to see these kind of leftovers sometimes, either just hanging around doing nothing as some vestigial structures do, or serving some diminished or alternate purpose such as these bones, or the human tailbone that serves as little more than a point for muscle attachment, but still showing every sign of being homologous with the equivalent bones in other species. So aside from just continuing an established pattern, this also matches a prediction of the theory. And that's why at least this structure in particular is considered a piece of evidence for evolution. No, it can't conclusively demonstrate evolution on its own, I agree. But it's just one part of the vast structure comprised of all the different kinds of evidence that we've talked about, and a lot more, every piece in accord with every other propping each other up. Now this is a far cry from your apparent interpretation of the claim as being that the bones are useless, therefore evolution. Durr. Of course, I've been doing this for a while, I'm aware of the arguments that might follow a statement like that, you know. The geologic column is garbage, homology can't be established, blah blah blah. But we've been over those, take my explanations or leave them, at this point it frankly doesn't matter. Either way, we're past the point of needing to reiterate. I can see it now, can't you? <laughs> All you need is a good imagination and some LSD and you'll be able to see that whale walking in real life. <laughs> Kent took a line from a 1994 children's book out of context. <laughs> He's a dang comedy genius. This textbook says, the whale's pelvis is evidence of its evolution from four-legged land-dwelling mammals. Well, that is stupid, okay? Mm, no, not really okay. I mean, okay, fine, you think so. Great. But thinking so is stupid. Look, if this assertion were just based on the fact that those bones look kinda like pelvic and leg bones, I could at least understand your thinking. You'd still be wrong, since at the very least, the presence of those kind of bones in that location in a totally aquatic mammal are at least a hint that something more might be going on. It'd be weak evidence, but it'd still be evidence. But when you pair that with a line of fossils that become increasingly whale-like in the rest of their anatomy, and whose legs and pelvises become increasingly small and inefficient for walking, I honestly I honestly cannot see any way to pretend that's not good evidence, let alone evidence at all. Unless you're outright denying reality to cling to something that you find more important than reality. Those bones in the whale's abdomen are essential to hold muscles that support the reproductive system. Without those bones and those special muscles, the whales cannot reproduce. This has nothing to do with walking on land, it has to do with getting more baby whales. Once again, I completely agree. Modern whales do not use those bones to walk on land. We're all in agreement here. The issue is that people on one side of this issue are taking all the evidence into account and trying to interpret it in a way that's consistent, parsimonious, and in accordance with all the other lines of evidence we're aware of, while the other side is outright ignoring all the bits they find inconvenient, which happens to be an awful lot of bits. So the author that wrote this is either ignorant of his whale anatomy and should not be writing a book about it, or he's a liar trying to push a theory off on our kids. Oh, don't even pretend like you have a problem with that. You know what we need in this country? We need a Christian Barney. Folks, somebody's got to reach these young kids. But if you were just a little smarter or just a little more honest, you'd realize that the statement, the modern whale pelvic bone has a role in reproduction, is not at all inconsistent with the statement that the modern whale pelvic bone is a piece of evidence for whale evolution. Lil Kenty, just because two unrelated statements both happen to mention a whale pelvis does not mean that one of them must be false. That doesn't even make sense as an objection. Here, this one says, whales once lived on land. Whales were not always sea dwellers. Modern whales show skeletal evidence of previous existence on dry land. Buried deep in a whale's hip muscles are two small bones, all that is left of the whale's pelvis and hind legs. That's stupid. The male and female bones are very different on whales. Check your whale anatomy and tear that page out of your book has no business being in there. So let me see if I understand you correctly here. The male and female of a given species have differently shaped pelvic bones, as you might expect if you're not some excessively sheltered Christian child and you have some passing familiarity with the birds and the bees. You say that these bones still have some function in reproduction, even if the young no longer need to pass through them during birth, 
And regardless of whether they still have any role in reproduction, if modern whales evolved from animals that needed males and females to have differences in their pelvic bones for other reasons, then those bones would have been different to start with anyway, so I honestly have no clue why it would surprise you if they're still different. And so your conclusion is, because those bones are different between the sexes, therefore, those bones cannot be evidence of any links to the fossils of land-dwelling animals, and you should vandalize a book. What? I wish I could interpret that some way that sounds halfway coherent, but sorry, no luck. This textbook says, humans have a tailbone at the end of the spine that is of no apparent use. I sure wish your whole argument here wasn't just based off a garbage understanding of vestigiality, but regardless, your claim in this video is that vestigial just means a part you don't need, which is why this whole section of your speech is meant to show the importance of parts that people call vestigial. Now, a vestigial structure is something you don't need anymore. You can live without both your legs and both your arms and both your eyes also. That doesn't prove you don't need them. There are no vestigial organs. And that being the case, I would really love to see how you counter the very next next sentence on your slide there. Some snakes have tiny pelvic bones and limb bones, and some cave-dwelling salamanders have eyes, even though members of the species are completely blind. Even by your preferred definition, those seem totally vestigial. So what would be your excuse for those, I wonder? I was debating a guy in North Alabama. He was the president of the North Alabama Atheist Association or something like that. What happened to the Berkeley professor? Had the day off? He got up and he said, folks, we've got evidence for evolution. Humans have a tailbone they no longer need. Hooray! Some guy said a thing that's been irrelevant since the start of this video. Let's talk about it some more for no reason. When it was my turn, I got up and I said, Mr. Patterson, I taught biology and anatomy. Oh, is this a horror story? Not too scary, please. I'd like to sleep tonight. I happen to know there are nine little muscles that attach to the tailbone, without which you cannot perform some very valuable functions. <laughs> I will not tell you what they all are, but go read your Grey's Anatomy and you can figure it out. You know, it's rare that I don't have a lot to say in these things, but you're basically just saying the same thing all over again for like the third time. So what do I really need to say at this point? I said, however, Mr. Patterson, if you think the tailbone is vestigial, I, Kent Hovind, will pay right now to have yours removed. <laughs> Bend over. So you asked a man to let you pay him to bend over for you and let you wreck his ass. And they didn't get you on solicitation of prostitution? That is stupid, folks. The tailbone is not vestigial. Once again, yes, the tailbone has a function, but not the same function as the homologous part of ancestral organisms. And sure, you can try to avoid the problem by denying the possibility of identifying homology based on anatomical comparison altogether like you did in episode 5, but I seem to remember you whining about a supposed lack of transitional fossils or missing links in another earlier video, episode 4 I think, and considering that the identification of a fossil as transitional requires the establishment of homology, it seems to me that simply by accepting the concept of a missing link as a valid concept, you already accept the concept that homology can be established by anatomical comparison, even if you refuse to accept that you do. If you outright deny the possibility of learning anything about the relationships between animals, by any comparison of any features of any animals ever, then sure, you can avoid that sinking feeling you get in your stomach when you see the fossil evidence of whale evolution or horse evolution or human evolution. And you're welcome to do that if you feel like it stabilizes the walls of the little god box that you're so determined to live in. But if you choose to do that, don't also whine that there are no transitional fossils, since by your standard that term ceases to have any meaning. Which, to be fair, is probably why in episode 4 you insisted that the entire chain of missing links is missing. Because how could you possibly find a missing link if homology is out of the picture? This one says, the coccyx, that's the tailbone, the small bone at the end of the human vertebral column has no present function and is thought to be the remainder of bones that once occupied the long tail of a tree-living ancestor. Uh-huh. So did you contact the author of Health Biology from 1991 to present your suggestion, or are you just pissing into the wind by whining to a bunch of creationists ten years later? I was taught when I went to school, man used to have a tail, but he lost it because he didn't need it. I thought, didn't need it? Have you ever thought how handy a tail would be? <laughs> have you ever come to the door with two sacks of groceries? Wouldn't that be nice, man, be able to grab that door and walk right around and get in? <laughs> lost it because we didn't need it. Kent, you don't need it. Humans generally don't need it. We are arguably the most successful species on the entire planet, assuming you exclude various insects and bacteria and stuff like that. And we did all that without tails, go figure. Natural selection doesn't function based on how handy you think it would be to have an extra grasping appendage for your coke, Kent. 
You know that as well as I do, or at least you should by now, and if you truly haven't figured it out, well that's pitiable, to say the least. But what's taking so long? I can't take this long to warm up a can of soup. Grandma? Grandma? Grandma! You promised me soup. You're a fucktop!